Today, we're gonna turn this into this. The meatloaf of insanity. Over $200 of ingredients is gonna make the best meatloaf ever. The best meatloaf ever that anybody's ever made anywhere, we promise. Stick around and see how we do it. If you love eating meat, especially high quality beef, pork, or chicken that was raised on vegan or vegetarian diets, you're in the right place. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when there's a new video. One of the things that makes meatloaf special is what you stuff inside. This is going to be a very special meatloaf. So I'm gonna stuff it with homemade French onion soup. Why not, right? I'll start by dicing a couple of onions. We're looking for about a quarter to half inch chunks. These will cook down to be a perfect size. Then strip the leaves from a bundle of fresh thyme, enough to fill about a teaspoon. With these ingredients together, it's time to fire up the stove and make our filling. In a skillet, add a high smoke point oil. I like avocado oil because it has protein that'll interact with the sugar in the onions to give us a nice Maillard reaction. That wonderful process that gives food that delicious brown taste. This isn't a great time for extra virgin olive oil. It's got a low smoke point and we don't want to burn the oil or the onion. The chopped onions go into the pan, as well as a half teaspoon of cracked black pepper and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Saute for about 15 to 20 minutes, stir in frequently. until the onions are golden brown and caramelized. Once the onions have achieved their full potential, I stir in the thyme and saute for another minute before adding in a quarter cup of beef broth. And a quarter cup of red wine. Hey, it's open, right? Might as well have a little taste. This wine tastes as good as my kitchen smells right now. I wish you guys could smell this. The onion soup will take about three or four minutes to cook down until very little liquid remains in the pot. And now to make the meatloaf. I chop enough parsley to yield about three tablespoons and add it with one and a half teaspoons of pepper, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and three quarters cup of breadcrumbs into my mixing bowl. Lightly beat three fresh eggs and set them aside. Finally, slice up a ball of fresh mozzarella cheese and set it aside as well. And now for the good stuff. One pound of Wagyu ground beef goes into the bowl. as does a pound of Korobuda pork, both from Snake River Farms. To round it out, in goes a pound of Heritage Domestic Lamb, too. After adding in the eggs, I mix it all together with my hands. With all of these amazing ingredients, you just know this is going to be delicious. I put a sheet of butcher paper down on my tray. You'll see in a minute why this is a critical step. Now using a spatula, I spread this insane combination out on the pan into a big rectangle.
On goes our French onion soup, spread evenly across the middle surface of the meat. And place the cheese across the meat at one end like this. Now, watch how I use the butcher paper. It becomes a tool to help me roll up my meatloaf like a jelly roll. A jelly roll made out of meat and stuffed with French onion soup. Oh my. But we're not done yet. This meatloaf is over the top, but we can make it better. More butcher paper on another pan, but this time it's gonna be homemade pepper garlic bacon that you may have seen us make from a heritage pork belly a few weeks ago. In case you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it at the end. I carefully lay out two rows of bacon slices, overlapping the rows by just a bit, making sure each slice touches the one next to it. Then I lay a strip of bacon across the joint where the rows meet and fold back every other slice before laying in another slice of bacon. Keep going like this and weave the bacon on both rows to make a bacon weave that just happens to be the same size as our meatloaf. When you see me put the meatloaf at one end of our weave, I bet you know what the butcher paper's for this time. Use it to roll up our meatloaf. And we're ready to cook the meatloaf of insanity. I'll meet you at the grill. This is Darth, our extra large big green egg. He's running at 275 degrees Fahrenheit with Fogo Super Premium hardwood lump charcoal and chunks of cherry wood. Darth uses a signals alarm thermometer and billows fan combination from Thermoworks to keep his temperature steady. I'm adding a food temperature probe right into the middle of the meatloaf and plugging it into one of the four channels on the signals so I can keep track of its progress. We're gonna let that cherry wood smoke roll over the meatloaf for about two and a half hours until the internal temperature of the meatloaf reaches 135 degrees. I can't wait to see it. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's brush on our favorite barbecue sauce as a glaze, making sure to get the sides. This glaze will add a delicious sweet sensation to the flavor profile that will balance wonderfully with the savory flavors of Wagyu beef, Corabuda pork, heritage lamb, onions, and mozzarella cheese already working here. The sticky texture of the barbecue sauce glaze will also add another layer to the experience that already includes the juicy meat and the gooey cheese. This is going to be good. We'll take about another hour to reach our target temperature of 160 degrees. Tell me that doesn't look ridiculously good. The Thermopen thermometer lets me double check that the temperature's right on the money, and it is. It's going to be hard to wait the 15 or 20 minutes for it to rest before it's time to slice and taste. 
let's head inside. All right, Leah, are you ready to taste the meatloaf of insanity? I can't believe I get to try this. I know, now you weren't here when I made it, but you saw the ingredients, right? So Wagyu beef, curabata pork, heritage lamb. I actually made homemade French onion soup and put it inside. And then you remember that bacon that we made a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. The pepper garlic bacon? made a bacon weave, wrapped it, and then put it on the smoker and smoked it for about four hours. That sounds like a lot of hard work. We want to see if it paid off. I'm ready. See if it really is the best meatloaf that anybody's ever made anywhere in all of history. So excited. All right, let's see. Let's cut off a couple pieces. Now, usually I give you too big of a piece that you can't chew on, so I'm gonna cut this down a little bit more. Oh, look at that. that look at that. So all right, here we go. I feel like everyone should try this recipe. I feel like uh, everybody should try this recipe. Well, you guys, I mean, just reach through the screen and grab some. You're on your mobile phone, right? All right, here's yours. Hang on, let me get some for me. All right, are we ready? Cheers, cheers and cheers. cheers. That's delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> mm. That bacon really makes a difference, huh? Mm -hmm. And the and the meatloaf gave a different flavor to the bacon. Ew. That's right. It's so tender. It's so moist. Go another piece. Yeah. All right, guys. You saw how we did it. Clearly, this is the best bacon. Here, yeah, just take the floor. Just take, swap, <laughs> swap the floor, guys. This is it. Look, it's it's over 200 bucks worth of ingredients. I gotta tell you, it's worth it. It'll be the best meatloaf you've ever had. It's not the same as mommy's meatloaf, right? Yeah. Not the same as my mom's meatloaf. Totally different. Like, that is comfort food drenched in gravy. This is barbecue. Doesn't get much better than this. So listen, if you liked this, we have lots of videos for you on the channel, including this one right here that's part of our Best of Food series. Check it out, and then we'll see you next week on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.